named Jesus. So Jairus finds his way through the crowd and gets all the way to Jesus and he does something that I believe is awesome. He kneels before him. My first point is this. We have to come to a point where we no longer care about our reputation. We no longer care about what other people think about. When we need Jesus, we got to kneel before him and I don't care what you think about me. He was a synagogue ruler. That means that people knew it was Jairus. Jairus didn't care what anybody else thought. He said, I'm going to kneel before you, Jesus, before everybody. Imagine this. Jairus has a situation and all he really wants to do is get to Jesus. So that means he has to go through the crowd. That means that he has to find him. I just came to encourage somebody. Sometimes it's going to take more than just. Sometimes we just do it like my, my, my friend calls it microwave Christians. We in and we out. We went it real fast. But sometimes we don't really want to put in the work. And I'm not talking about works because we know that we're saved by faith through grace. I'm not talking about works. I'm just talking about the idea that, God, I'm going to give you my very best. Jairus understood that I'm not going to stop until I get to Jesus. I, I know I might have to go through a crowd. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. I'm leaving my daughter behind and she's dying. What kind of faith does that take to leave your situation behind and say, I got to go put it in Jesus' hands? Because really, what I would have done was stay by my daughter, and I don't have a daughter, I'm not married at all, but if I stayed by my daughter until the very last breath. But what is it like to leave your situation totally out of your control and say, God, here I am, take it, please help me. Please help me, please help me, please help me because I can't do this. Jairus finds himself at the feet of Jesus. Something wonderful happens at that moment. Jesus recognizes Jairus. I don't know what it feels like when you finally begin to sense the presence of God. But if you really want to sense the presence of God, it's very simple. He says he inhabits the praises of his people. So I encourage you sometimes when you're feeling low, I would just put on a good song and start praising him. When you're feeling like in my day it can't get any rougher, I would just say to God be the glory. And I know it's easier said than done, but sometimes we got to understand I can't wait until things change. I got to praise him in advance. I just got to begin to glorify his name because I know he'll bring me through this situation. Jairus gets to a point where he says, you know what? I just got to go and get to Jesus. I can't imagine how Jairus feels at that moment when Jesus recognizes him. All of us mentioned so far that we have some situations, and I do as well, we have no other choice but to trust God. But when I came this morning and we began to sing, it was so comforting to sense the presence of God. It was so comforting to be around other believers, knowing that where the two and three are gathered together in his name, he'll be there in the midst. It's so wonderful to know, God, I made it. Somebody went through a week that you might not even have felt like I was going to make it to Sunday morning. But if you can just say, God, I made it. I'm, I, I'm struggling to get through the door, but I'm here. I'm like Jairus and I'm crawling on my knees, but I'm here and I need a touch from you. The bottom line is now Jesus recognizes that Jairus is there. He explains the situation to Jairus and Jairus gets some great news, God. Guys, this is what he says. Jesus says, you know what? Let's go. So if Jesus said to me, let's go fix your situation, I'm like, let's go. Like, we got to go. We got to hurry up. My daughter is dying. We got to go. Jesus does something. He's on his way. He's with a crowd, and he's on his way to Jairus. So if you got a situation right now, put your hand up. If you understood that Jesus was going to go and fix whatever it was, school, work, family, you're like, Jesus, let's run. You're the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's see you saying Bo out this day. Let's, we got to go. So he's going through the crowd, and all of a sudden, Jesus stops. You on the way, Jesus. We can't stop right now. I need a miracle. And I don't know if I told you before, my name is Jairus. My daughter is dying. We don't have time to stop, Jesus. But all of a sudden, Jesus stops in the midst of the crowd. Why does he stop? 
Because he realized that power has left him. And all of a sudden, he looks back and it's the woman with the issue of blood. Now, I've been in church for a long time, y'all. And every time I hear this story, it's all about the woman with the issue of blood. And matter of fact, she had great faith. She had faith that he said, to your faith has made you whole. But all I want to know is, what about Jairus? It's really nice that you're going to heal her right now, Jesus. But what about me? There's somebody in this room that's sick and tired of other prayers getting answered. The other people are getting promotions. Other families are turning around. But we're wondering, God, what about me? And see, it's nothing wrong with the fact that he healed the woman with the issue of blood. But I'm just wondering, there's somebody in this room that's saying, when are you going to help me, God? When are you going to hear me? But I came to let you know that Jesus knows exactly what we need, when we need it, and he's always in control. The point I want us to understand about this is that when he sensed that the power had left him, he looked down. And guess where the woman with the issue of blood was on? Her knee. I just came to let us know that there's nobody greater or smaller in the eyes of God. Jairus was way up in the social class and she was beneath everybody. But when we all need Jesus, we find ourselves on our knees. There's some of us that look down on other people that think that they don't need. Come on, man. Y'all understand what I'm talking about this morning? We are not better than anybody else. Jesus doesn't look at how much money we make, where we live, what car we drive, when we need him. We all fall down on our knees. We got to get to a point where we humble ourselves before him and understand that we're all on the same playing field. When people walk into this church, they ought to sense the love of God. They ought to be greeted like I was. And I, when I came in, I said, I feel welcome. But every church is not like that. Because some people come into a church and they feel like, I'm not good enough. I don't really know the word like that. Oh, I can't sing like that. Or I'm not this and I'm not that. But I guarantee you at 12 o'clock at night when you got a problem and that person got a problem, we're all on our knees. We have to get to a point where we're so concerned about others with the love of Christ that we're not looking at them through our eyes but through God's eyes. To say, can I pray with you? I'm not going to look at you on the level where the world may look at you and determine that you're below me at all. We're all in the same race. So the bottom line is this. All of a sudden, he's talking, looking back, and saying the power has left him. Because the disciples, they're like, well, of course you stop. I mean, you're in a crowd. Somebody touched you. But Jesus, you know, he don't even be playing with that. He just straight to the point, look, power left me. I know why I stopped. I know why I stopped. You don't even know why I stopped. I know why I stopped. But what's so wonderful about the woman with the issue of blood is that she represents somebody with low self-esteem. She represents somebody that doesn't want to be seen. She represents the person that will rather sit in the back of the room and never get noticed. But she needs Jesus as well. And, and how does the person that barely talks, how does the person, I remember when I was in New Jersey, my friend was telling me a story about a penny and how a very wealthy man was in a limousine with his friend who wasn't wealthy at all. And they got out of the limousine and they stepped over a penny. And this penny was disfigured. It had gum on it. You can even recognize it anymore. And the guy who was wealthy actually picked the penny up. And his friend looked at him and said, what are you doing? He said, this, this, this penny still has the same value. It hasn't lost its value at all. Some of us looked a little beat up. Some of us looked at it and says, I don't look like what I've been through, huh? Some of us know all about that. I want to let you know we have the same value. No matter what we face, no matter what we went through, God can still get the glory out of our life. He can take... So the bottom line is this, she understands that, man, I'm really, really low. And I don't even want you to, don't even point me out right now. But I really do need, I've been to all the doctors, I've been to every physician. There's no cure for this. And God is so awesome that in the midst of figuring out what's going on with Jairus, he is able to minister to her as well. 
What I love about this moment is this. Instead of wondering why we didn't get our blessing, why don't we look at other people and say, if God can do it for them, he can do it for me. If anything, Jairus' faith was encouraged in that moment to say, I'm walking with the right dude. I'm walking, I went all the way out here to get him. If he just healed her, we can still go. We have to change our perspective. Instead of saying, Lord, why, why them? Why them say, okay, that's the same God I serve. That's the same God I serve. And we have to understand in that moment, Jairus can say, all right, I'm okay. We can do this. So all of a sudden, they begin to keep walking. Something happens in that moment when they're walking. So imagine, we started, we, you follow me so far? We started by the boat. He met up with Jesus, got his attention. Daughter is dying, we gotta get back to his home. He stopped by the woman with the issue of blood. Jairus, I can't, y'all imagine what he's doing? I don't know what he's doing, but he's probably just standing there, you know, wondering what is going on. But the bottom line is that, now they're on their way to the home. So this is like, I, if you run a track, I hit the curb you know, on the 200, whatever, I'm coming, final stretch, 100 meter, I gotta get there. And he stopped. He stopped by someone that came from Jairus' home. And the individual said, it's too late, she's already dead. Leave the teacher alone. Two things that, that hit me when I read this. When Jesus is with us, number one, we cannot let the words of anyone else determine our faith in Christ. Because there'll be family members, there will be friends that tell you, you need to stop praying. That is not coming through anymore. There's nothing that's going to change about that situation. I came to let you know that if you are walking with him, continue to walk with him. He will finish what he started. He is faithful to the end. Don't let anyone else tell you that it's too late. It's never too late with Jesus. But I love what Jesus did. Because if I was Jairus, I would say, be quiet. I don't even want to hear you. We have things to do. Jesus answered it for him. And he said, don't be afraid. He said, don't be afraid. He answered to the man for Jairus. And so the Bible says that he was on his way with his disciples. How many disciples do we have? Twelve. I was studying and found out that Jesus only took Peter, James, and John. And that made me realize you got to be careful who you're walking with. See, Jesus understood that I got a situation that I really need to get done. So I just can't have anybody, everybody around me. Because when God wants to move, you need to watch who's around you. Because when God wants to do it, he don't got no time for unbelievers. He ain't got no time for doubters. He's walking with his core. We need to check out our core. Who are you praying with in the morning? Who are you talking to during the week? I'm just saying, sometimes I had to reevaluate my core. Because sometimes we like to have a lot of people around us, and at the end of the day, they hindering us. Matter of fact, if he took everybody, I wonder if they would have been like, yo, we should turn around. Ah, Jesus, I think it's too late. But he understood, I'm taking Peter, James, and John because we got a job to do. Watch who's around you. So all of a sudden, they make it all the way to the home. And I want to let you know this. This is, again, a synagogue ruler. So I can't imagine that when he went to get Jesus, that they were thinking to themselves, oh, when Jesus get here, he's going to turn it out. They're probably thinking, we don't need that teacher. Because matter of fact, that's what they called him. But I want to let you know that when people call your Jesus just a teacher, let them know that he's way more than that. Let them know that he's a healer, that he's a deliverer, that he's a may waker. He, see, some people don't know Jesus the way that you know Jesus. And if they don't know him that way, they just going to have to get to know him that way. But don't, come on now, at my perspective, I can only tell you what God has done for me. If he's never made a way for you, you're not going to know him as a may waker. May waker. Say that five times. That's hard. Don't laugh at me. That was hard. So the bottom line is this. They're on their way to the home. So at this moment, I'm feeling for Jairus, y'all. I'm like, Jairus, we are almost there. We're almost there, Jairus. You've kept the faith. You've been patient. First of all, you didn't care about your reputation. 
You didn't care about what anyone else thought. And when someone else was getting blessed, you still stood beside Jesus. When people were telling you to give up on your situation, you said, I'm still going to go. There's a miracle with my name on it. I'm going to stand right beside him all the way to the end. And so you get all the way there. And I want to let you know that the setting was not conducive to Jesus. Again, because of the type of people that associated with Jairus. So it's not like they were welcoming him in to heal. But Jesus is above everybody else. He doesn't care what people think about him. Come on, man. God created them. They're grasshoppers to him. So he walks in, and something unusual is happening. They've already started the funeral service. They have flute players. They got the organist, drummer. They got people in that time were professional wailers. They, their profession was to cry. I don't know how you get hooked up with that, but you get paid to go cry at somebody's funeral that you don't even know, and you get paid for that. But those people were crying too. When they get there, the funeral service has already started. Can you imagine when Jairus walks in, he looks and he can only think, God, is it still possible? Is it still possible? Everything is set up for failure right now. But what did we say in the beginning? God, I have no other choice but to trust you. So he walks into that room. And he says this. As they're playing, they don't know what song they were playing. I don't know. But he walks in. And the first thing that people do is laugh at him. They laugh at Jesus. Because he says that she is not dead. She's sleep. So they're like, come on, man. She dead. And they laugh at him. And Jesus does something great in that moment. He tells everybody to get out. Everybody that doesn't believe, get out. Everybody that doesn't think that what's about to take place is going to take place, get out. There has to be a moment, and I know that there's been some Sundays like this, when the presence of God is so strong that if unbelievers can't, can't even fathom what's going on, you just have to get out or you have to come in. It has to come to a point where the presence of God is so strong that you're just going to walk into a room and you understand that I'm not sensing what's going on. I just have to get out. Jesus brings it to a point where he's like, well, get out. If you're going to laugh, if you're not going to believe, then get out. And he takes in people with him. He takes Peter, James, and John, the mom who stayed there the entire time, and now Jairus. Can we stand to our feet this morning? And I can only imagine at this point that after all that Jairus has gone through during this day, the moment of truth is now here. And I want to encourage you this morning, whatever you're facing, as you begin to just praise the Lord through it, only you know. Only you know. If that means just talking to the Lord, whatever it takes right now. Maybe it's a family member, a friend, whatever it is, just begin to pray for them. Maybe it's a situation that you're facing. Jairus had his situation. The woman with the issue of blood had her situation. They did whatever it took. Are we going to do whatever it takes this morning? Are we going to not care about our reputation? Are, are we not going to be worried about what everyone else thinks? Are, are we going to even get to the point where we say, I kneel before you right now, Jesus. I need to meet with you. They're in the bedroom now. And Jesus whispers into her ear. To get up. When I think about this story, she gets up. There is power in the name of Jesus. But what I love about it is this. Jesus could have did it million, millions of other ways. But he waited to do it in only a way that he and some of us are in some situations that when God shows up, he shows up in a way that only he can receive the glory. 
And if it happened any other way, then it would look like it could have been someone else, or it could have been this person, or it could have been that person. But Jesus wanted to make sure it was clear, only I can raise the dead. Only I can do what no one else can do. Right now, this morning, I'm praying for the person that has a situation that only Jesus can fix. Now, if your life is perfect and you got it all together, amen. But there's somebody in this room that has a situation that only God can fix. And I came all the way from Philadelphia to let you know that he can do it. That he can do it. I shared a little bit of my testimony before. But there's so many other times, and I can't go through all of them, but some of us have some testimonies in this room. And the thing I love about testimonies is this. You cannot have a testimony without going through a test. Maybe you're in the midst of your test right now, but if you can hold on like Jairus, you will have a testimony. God is able to do it. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. I don't know if it's okay to call a couple people down if you want prayer right now. If there's a song that, that you have on your heart, I want to be able to pray together. Maybe you have a situation this morning and you find yourself needing to trust him. Don't let this moment slip. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah.